police officer patrolling the streets of Los Angeles realized he was being followed, and when he turned, he was greeted by an unexpected homesick. This story takes place in the famous city of Los Angeles, one of the most populous in the United States. Seeing dogs and their owners walking in this area, dogs are loved by many people because of their loyal and charming appearance. They are one of the longest spent companions of human beings. Not only are they good at hunting, but they are also very adaptable and can adapt to the family environment on the streets of Los Angeles. There is a dog wandering around hoping to find someone one day in this bustling city, and it is the Los Angeles Police Department, which is often referred to as the Los Angeles Police Department for short, that takes him home. There was one officer, Mercado, who had no idea how eventful his day was going to be. In fact, when Officer Mercado first left the door of the Los Angeles Police Department building at the end of the patrol shift, he didn't expect more daily work. On that sunny morning, another man joined his team. Officer Tavera. Two police officers drove around in police cars. Their shifts have seemed easy so far, as they haven't had much trouble for a day. However, things have changed. As they approached Hobart Avenue, both officers got out of the car and walked around for some time before they realized that something had caught Mercado's attention, and after wandering around him for a few minutes, the officer turned around and he was surprised, but it was a very pleasant surprise, and within a few inches of his feet there was a puppy, a helpless but happy-looking puppy, who fell over. Officer Mercado soon fell in love with the little animal, and looked up around, wondering who the puppy might belong to, but there was no one else there. Mercado felt a burst of disappointment that the puppy was alone, so who was taking care of it, the puppy was very energetic and seemed to be in the mood to play, and Mercado began to follow him around in the street. The small animals were very diligent. Mercado knelt and watched his new companion and entertainment officer Mercado's patrol partner Tavera appreciated this sweet interaction. People rarely find animals following them around. Tavera took out her phone, she looked at the couple as she recorded the video, poked a few photos, and then shared them online. Going online through the social media account of the Los Angeles Police Department, every job has its benefits, and meeting lovely strangers in the form of small animals seems to be one of their jobs. Both officers wanted to give the little guy a name, and they decided to name it after the street where he was found in a video posted on the Los Angeles Police Department's Twitter account, Hobart Mercado. Her voice could be heard when Officer Tavera called Puppy by its new name. Officers should not leave Hobart alone. There are no others in the area. It was obvious that the puppies had developed an attachment to them, and they felt they were now responsible for the poor thing, so they guided the puppies into the car, even though the officers had just met Hobart, and the little guy seemed to have trusted them. Hobart jumped into the front seat as if sitting in their car was something he had done many times before. Or, as soon as the police ensured Hobart's safety, they went to the police station, and they began to look for the owner of the puppy, but soon they found that the lonely puppy was not lost. He once had an owner, but they didn't. Hobart had been abandoned. Unfortunately, animal homelessness is a big problem in America. About 70 million stray animals live in the United States. However, only a small number of animals end up in shelters, and most of them can only fend for themselves on the streets. Hobart was one of many lucky animals found and placed in a shelter. Although it was a difficult decision, they knew that sending him to a local rescue shelter would be the best thing for Hobart. The police put Hobart back in the car and drove to the Slum Rescue Foundation. Slum rescuers were quickly drawn to the puppy's cute nature, and they made a statement to Hobart in an update that he is the cutest and most lively puppy, likes all puppy cousins and chews toys for hours. It is still learning toilet training and likes to play outdoors and on the grass. Sergeant Mercado hated being separated from Hobart and they didn't spend much time, but when he found that no one would come to help Hobart, he began to like the puppy. He felt both disappointed and excited. The solution to the problem is clear to him, and he will be the one to take care of Hobart. This adoption made many people very happy. This puppy looks very happy to be reunited with the police. 
Hobart followed Sergeant Mercado as if he had chosen this man as his new father after Hobart was officially adopted, and he essentially became part of the Mercado family, and because of this, the sergeant wanted to share his new family members with his colleagues. Before long, everyone in the Los Angeles Police Department fell in love with the puppy. Animals are often heard joining the workforce as mascots or as emotional support for police officers. The department joked on Twitter that the little guy would be part of their canine squad. Welcome to Los Angeles Police Department Hobart. They said at the end of the post, as I mentioned earlier, people like dogs very much, but this is especially true when it comes to the police force. This is because such animals are easy to train and have very sensitive noses, which enable them to effectively search for specific smells or substances. However, not all dogs have evolved in the same way, and some breeds are preferred, such as German Shepherds. It is unlikely to see puppies like Hobart trained as part of a canine unit. However, due to the circular nature of social media, this is not impossible. What happened to the dog after thousands of people who saw pictures of officers Hobart and Mercado took pictures of them, and the Los Angeles Police Department noticed the concern and posted another post on Facebook, updating their followers with the latest on the officer and his new puppy in Hobart. A lot of you have been asking what Hobart is doing these days, and you are glad to know that Officer Mercado adopted him, and he is now living a wonderful life with Mercado and his puppy. As it turns out, the story's popularity can be attributed to officers Hobart and Mercado, while also praising the officer's selfless heart. Many Twitter accounts also shared their admiration for his handsome appearance. Mercado seems to be the kind of person who is beautiful both inside and outside. Luckily, a chance encounter with young Hobart led him to find his permanent home. Although most people like the idea of keeping pets, the responsibilities that come with it can be quite arduous. Still, Officer Mercado believes the responsibility is worth it, hoping more people will choose to adopt pets from animal shelters rather than buy them. Should live a better life like Hobart. His master abandoned him, and he cried incessantly. But a few days later something incredible happened. As many people know, as the saying goes, a dog is man's best friend, but it is true for many reasons. From thousands of years ago, when they helped us find food, to modern times, when they only provide us with love and companionship, it is not surprising that we love these quadruped dogs so much, unfortunately, not everyone felt the same way as the poor puppy. Although many people may like their pets, sometimes they are unable to continue to take care of them, no matter how much they want to. In such desperate situations, people may end up handing their animals over to shelters because this is the best thing to do in terms of animal health and quality of life. But it may be better to send the animals to a shelter so they may eventually find a permanent new home where they can be properly cared for. Without the original family, it is still very difficult and difficult for these creatures to adapt to the new life. Sadly, this happened to two dogs, AJ and Toby, in 2016. The dog owners were no longer able to take care of the dogs, so they handed them over to Carson Animal Shelter in California. AJ is a Bulldog Labrador hybrid and a very cute dog. He and his brother Toby were initially sent to an animal shelter together. Toby is not AJ's biological brother, but another dog in the family. The two dogs look so similar that they behave as if they were born from the same litter. First of all, when these dogs were sent to the shelter for the first time, they performed very well, according to the shelter, AJ is a beautiful and lively dog, and he is very friendly. This puppy likes to make a fuss. One of his favorite things to do is to curl up with the shelter staff, and they give him a lot of love and care. However, as time went on, AJ began to behave strangely. Obviously, the longer he stayed in the shelter, the more hesitant and worried the dog became. The animal knew exactly what was wrong. Where are his parents? Why don't they pick him up yet? More importantly, Toby and AJ can't live together because the shelter is too full. In fact, Toby had to be sent to another shelter because there was no room for him at Carson Animal Shelter. Separated from his brother, the poor puppy's condition seemed to get worse. AJ quickly became very depressed. 
six-year-old puppies give up eating or eat only a small amount of food. Besides, it seems that even the puppy's own body is giving up, because AJ quickly catches a cold. The shelter staff didn't know what to do. AJ was so upset about what had happened and so confused that he began to be autistic. It continued to happen over the next few days, leaving shelter staff concerned about the health of the animals. They know that if dogs don't start eating normally again as soon as possible, things may soon get very bad. Watching the dog languish for days, crying day and night for his missing family, a shelter worker came up with a brilliant idea. They decided that the best way to post news about AJ and Toby was to post it on their social media sites. They posted a video of AJ with almost tears in his eyes. In the heart-wrenching clip, the puppy can be seen lying in bed looking miserable. The animal was so frustrated that he was visibly shaking and crying when a staff member tried to comfort him and calm him down, although it seemed to have no effect. It is quite obvious that AJ is not dealing well with abandonment, and he has serious abandonment problems. In addition to the video, the shelter posted a Facebook caption that said, AJ is absolutely a pure, gentle and lovely dog, he likes other dogs, and he misses his brother. But he was very sad. He is ill and needs your help today. After uploading the video, the shelter also wants people to share it so that as many people as possible can see it. They hope that if enough people see the video, someone will step up and even adopt AJ and Toby, so that the two dogs can stay together in a more comfortable place and relieve their separation anxiety. It didn't take long for this video to attract wide attention. The video was posted online on February 2, 2016. In just a few hours, it has garnered millions of views and reactions from around the world. Internet users were heartbroken when they saw the grieving dog, and many left comments about his love and support, the shelter was overwhelmed by many people's sympathy for the poor abandoned puppy. Their plan worked better than they thought. Millions of people around the world have seen their plea for help, so there must be someone who can do something for the abandoned dog and his brother, and although AJ is well publicized, the dog himself does not know he is in the spotlight. Instead, the animal cried all day and all night, only hoping that his master would come back and that he could live a normal life with his younger brother. Sadly, AJ will never return to his original family life. But someone wanted to help the puppy. After crying in the kennel for a few days, something incredible happened. AJ found a new home. It turned out that someone saw the video footage of the poor puppy in despair and knew they had to help. Just days after the video went viral, the man headed to the animal shelter in search of AJ. Upon arriving at the building, the man explained to the staff that he had seen the clip and that he wanted to adopt AJ and let him live a better life, because they really couldn't bear to see the animal so heartbroken. The staff were excited to hear the news. They breathed a sigh of relief that their plan worked. They are eager to show the man to AJ in the hope that the dog will also accept his potential new owner. After hours of greeting and getting to know each other, the new owner made up his mind. They found their own dog. They then had to leave so they could fill out all the necessary paperwork for them to formally adopt AJ. It didn't take long for AJ to finally set foot on his way to his forever new home. After the dog was officially adopted, the shelter posted another post on their Facebook page to update those eager to know what happened to AJ. The post featured a picture of the puppy and read, This beautiful woman has touched the hearts of many people. Today she is lucky to be free to walk out of the shelter even when she has a cold. AJ must have pulled himself together, and now he has left his kennel and returned to a loving home. But the shelter wanted to make sure the dog was as happy as possible. Because the dog had been handed over to another shelter, they decided to try to send Toby to theirs so that AJ and his brother could be reunited. They need to bring Toby back to their shelter before he can be adopted into the same family as AJ, so the family can see the animal and get to know him a little before deciding to adopt two dogs. In addition, the shelter can assess the puppy's behavior and health, and if he can't go home with AJ, they can let him be adopted by the perfect family. Thankfully, the staff was able to adapt Toby to his new environment, although it did take a lot of patience and love to do so. 
Eventually, the puppy calmed down and was adopted by the same loving family. Thanks to the staff at Carson's shelter and the good people who adopted AJ and Toby, these cute puppies have a second life. Petruka's parents were not around, his mother had passed away. When he was very young. Perhaps this is why. Not having experienced maternal love and care from childhood. He grew up to be gloomy and unsociable. His father raised him. And Petruk was a late and only child. When his mother passed away. His father was already quite old. So he never remarried. They lived together. Unwanted by anyone. Without the warmth of a woman. Now, his father was gone too. Taken by an incurable illness. And he was reduced to ashes within a few months. Petruk couldn't even comprehend how it all happened. The doctors just shrugged their shoulders. Saying that these things happened. He buried his father and started to think about how he should live on. Should he move to the city? But who would need him there? Without any profession or education. He had no relatives in the city to stay with. Back in his hometown. At least, he had his own house and roof over his head. He wouldn't find a bride in these remote parts even if he searched. With a lamp in broad daylight. So, Petruk decided to continue living alone in his parental house. In the summer. He would tend to the village livestock. And in winter. He would hunt for sustenance. Since childhood. Petruka's father took him along on hunting trips to the woods. That's how he managed to get by year after year. Doing the same things. With no hope for the future. Yet, he never felt despondent or complained about his fate. He believed that everything was still ahead of him, a family. Children, and they would all live together happily and long. He believed that his children would have a better life than him. And he would do everything to ensure it. When the weight of loneliness became too much to bear. Petruk would take down his father's rifle and cartridge bag from the wall. Put a backpack on his shoulders and head into the taiga. In the old hunting cabin built by his grandfather. Trofimov, Petruk found solace. He would brew tea. Light the old kerosene lamp. And enjoy his simple evening meal with a sweet starter. Made from sugary powder. Books became his savior in this lonely world. Since childhood, he read a lot. Going on imaginary journeys with the characters in the stories. Experiencing all the hardships and twists of fate with them. On the shelf. He kept plenty of books and magazines, and sometimes. While contemplating the meaning of life. He would start humming a simple melody. Composing straightforward lyrics himself. Dreaming of singing these songs to his future son. It didn't matter if a bear had stepped on his ear, he sang. With his soul, of the forest which he roamed with his father from childhood. He picked mushrooms, gathered berries, pine cones and nuts, hunted game and caught fish. He loved the tranquility and peace of the forest, knowing that it would never betray or harm him. Unlike people with their boundless treachery and passions, he felt at home in the woods, knew all the paths and trails in the vicinity made by animals and people. Not far from his cabin, a forest stream flowed, and the water gushed straight from under the stone. Cold and delicious, Petruk would drink from there for his tea. And no matter how much he drank, he always wanted more. One warm summer day, overcome by melancholy, he couldn't bear it anymore. He grabbed his father's rifle, put a backpack on his shoulders and set off into the woods to cure his depression. By evening, he had reached the winter cabin. Just in time to have his evening tea. He needed to hurry, he didn't want to be left without his evening drink. As he descended the hill with a bucket in hand and stepped briskly. Towards the spring. He came across a lynx lying right across the path. The forest cat was dead. And nearby, he heard a faint. 
mournful meowing. Stepping towards the sounds and parting the thick bushes. Patruk saw a young lynx cub. Patruk saw a small lynx cub in the grass. Judging by its size. It was barely a month old and still very helpless. Someone had shot its mother. But she managed to escape and carry the cub. Away from the scene of the tragedy. Hiding it in the grass. Patruk was heartbroken at the sight of the dead lynx. And he felt even more compassion for the orphaned cub since he, too, had grown up without a mother. He picked up the little lynx and carried it to his forest cabin. There, he made a comfortable place for it and fed the cub. As best as he could. Unable to come up with a proper name. Patruk called it, Barsik, in the end. They lived together in the forest cabin. For Barsik, he had to build a large enclosure in the spacious barn. Since the forest was a true home for the lynx. When they went to the woods, Barsik could roam freely wherever he pleased. Patruk knew that Barsik was wild at heart. And would be better off in the wilderness. But he couldn't help caring deeply for the lynx. Barsik seemed to have a family now, and Patruk couldn't help but feel a bit lonely yearning for a family of his own. However, he didn't lose hope, believing that one day he would also have a family and children. Just like he had dreamt. Time went by, and Barsik grew into a beautiful and graceful creature. One day, after returning from another trip to the forest, Patruk was surprised to find a young woman standing near his house. Exhausted and crying, she had lost her way in the forest and was saved by Barsik, who guided her to Petruka's cabin. The young woman was in awe of the encounter, and thanked Petruk for his wild friend's help. Petruk comforted her and learned that she was lost in the woods for a long time until she met the lynx. As they talked, they discovered that they had a deep connection, and felt a special bond with each other. The young woman's name was Oleana. And Patruk was fascinated by her charm and beauty. They fell in love and soon got married. Forming a strong and happy family. Patruk and Oleana had three children together. Living in harmony with each other and with Barsik. Who had brought them together in the first place. The story of Patruk and Barsik. The Lynx was a tale of how fate can bring unexpected connections and blessings into one's life. They lived happily ever after in the forest, creating a loving family amidst the wilderness. They threw the old donkey into the wolf cage and sentenced him to death. What happened next was unbelievable. In Albania, donkeys are traditionally used for various humble jobs. They are usually used for the transportation of guns and people especially in mountainous areas where vehicles are not practical. While the practice may have been significantly reduced in most areas, it is still rampant in rural areas. Most of these donkeys suffer from abuse and unremitting labor. Perico is such a donkey. In this case, he is seriously overworked. He is owned by a group of farmers in a small Albanian village called Paddock where the main source of income for most people remains agriculture. The village is located halfway up the mountain. And donkeys are more suitable for transportation in hilly areas than bicycles or trolleys. The grey donkey was bought from a local breeder at an early age and has worked tirelessly ever since. He was trained to pull carts and carry goods for villagers. At first, Perico found the job difficult and tiring. He had to pull a heavy trolley full of vegetables and goods. And sometimes the road was steep and rocky. But as time went on, the industrious animal grew stronger and more skilled. And he began to take pride in his work. His daily routine is the same. It began when his master called him when the first ray of sunshine began to pass through the trees. Then they would prepare a day's work for him. And he would get a small amount of food before they set out. The donkey's owner will load his cart with all kinds of goods. From bags of flour to boxes of fresh produce. 
Perico is a strong donkey. And he can carry the weight without complaining. When the car is loaded, the donkey and one of his owners will begin their journey through the country. They would snake through fields, forests and hilly trails, stopping at farms and markets along the way to deliver goods. As time goes by, Perico will feel tired, but he never complains. He knows that his work is very important. And he is proud of being able to help. So, he will force himself to move on. Even if his legs are sore and his stomach coos with hunger. Perico spent most of the day pulling trolleys. And waits up and down the rugged terrain. Just taking a break to drink water. He doesn't get tired easily and works hard. Earlier in the day. After pulling the cart. He worked in his master's field at night. Whenever night falls and stars appear. Perico returns to his comfortable stable. After a hard day's work. He would lie on his straw bed. His eyes are heavy with fatigue. And he will slowly enter a quiet sleep. Then, he will wake up early the next day and continue his daily work. Although Perico worked as hard as he could, his breeder didn't appreciate him and sadly didn't know when to stop. As time went on, his rest time became shorter and shorter. Until he had almost no time to rest. His master was slow to feed him. And sometimes did not trim his hooves. Donkey has lived at home for more than 20 years. And years of hard work soon made him physically exhausted. Naturally, as he grew older, he became weaker and weaker. And could no longer work as hard as before. As the years went by, Perico began to slow down. His joints are not as flexible as before. And he finds himself tired more easily than before. But even so, the donkey never lost his enthusiasm for life. He continued to work hard. Enjoying the simple pleasures of country life. Such as drinking a cup of cool water on a hot summer day. Or covering himself with a warm blanket on a cold winter night. But his body doesn't compare with his positive attitude. One day, when the donkey was pulling the cart up the mountain. He was so weak that he was crushed by the weight of the cart. And fell to the ground. His master urged him to get up. And Perico tried his best because he didn't like his master. To be angry with him. But he couldn't stand up anymore. The donkey did not move. Angry and disappointed. The master took the donkey home and put him in his corral. One of them called the local vet who came to examine the donkey. The doctor arrived and treated the donkey. But just before he left. He reminded them of the donkey's age and advised them to greatly reduce his workload. Perico's owners were frustrated when they received the news. But they followed the doctor's advice. Donkeys don't go out to work anymore. They gave him food and water every day and left him in the corral. The wolf howled and pushed the cage. But the cage did not move. And no one came to save it. After trying every means to get away without success. The wolf had to turn to his fate. Frustrated and tired. The workers took turns feeding him and watching him every day. He became their source of entertainment. They would feed him and howl so he would howl back. Wolves don't like being played by people and roar at them. He just wants to go home. After being locked up for about four days, the poor animal became tame. And it just stared at the people in frustration. Whenever they came to make fun of him, he would roar at them. Perico, on the other hand, remained unharmed in his corral. The donkey had enough time to regain his strength, and even looked better than ever. His master, however, was not pleased with the development. They didn't like him to eat without working, and let him work in the field several times. One day, one of them came up with a terrible idea. He suggested that they keep the donkey in the wolf's cage. And see what happens. Unexpectedly, they all agreed. One of them brings Perico to his side. 
pushes him towards wolves together. And then closes the door again. What happened next was completely unexpected. When Perico's owners returned, they saw a very ugly scene. Instead of fighting, the two animals snuggled up to each other. Soon, the wolf and the donkey became best friends. The two animals formed an indissoluble bond. Because of their common experiences, and found comfort in each other. These people can't believe what they see. They want animals to fight with each other or something else. Especially because they are sworn enemies in the wild. They don't think these animals will make friends. The unlikely friendship spread through the village. And many felt sorry for the animals. Soon, a large number of people signed the petition. And submitted letters to the Albanian government. Due to the public outcry, the government ordered these people to release the captive wolves back into the wild. Perico was sad to see him leave, but he also had a happy ending. He was taken to a new home, where he didn't have to work and could be taken good care of. He was also relocated to a green pasture, with plenty of food and water at all times. The wolf often comes to greet his friends, and they will spend happy and happy hours together. They are still friends and live happily in their newly gained freedom. Crows are renowned as one of the most intelligent bird species on earth. However, when an elderly man, Arnold Harrison, began feeding a local raven, he had no idea of the extraordinary gift it would bring him. This gift moved him to tears. Arnold Harrison had led a remarkable life. As a young man in his twenties, he had met the love of his life, a woman named Amelia. From their first encounter, they became inseparable, embarking on thrilling adventures together across the globe. After eloping and getting married, Arnold and Amelia returned to their hometown, deciding to settle down and start a family. While they cherished the adventures they had experienced, they both felt a void in their lives. After discussing it, they realized their shared desire to have a family of their own. It didn't take long for Amelia to become pregnant. The news filled both soon-to-be parents with immense joy, eager to embrace this new chapter of their lives. They longed to impart their wisdom about life and the beauty of the world to their child. Nine months later, after a challenging pregnancy, Amelia gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. The couple named her Joy, as she truly brought boundless joy into their lives. Amelia and Arnold proved to be exceptional parents, nurturing their daughter's innate curiosity, determination, and adventurous spirit. Together, the family embarked on countless trips, allowing Joy to explore and discover the wonders of the world. However, among all the marvels they encountered, it was birds that captivated Joy's heart. Wherever the family went, Joy's fascination with these creatures only grew stronger. Joy took her binoculars and bird sighting book to explore what she could discover. During her adventures, the young girl came across several rare birds, but her favorites were the common yet highly intelligent crows. Joy delighted in observing them as they flew around, solving complex problems such as cracking open hard nuts that their beaks couldn't handle. Often, Joy would provide these tough nuts to the black birds and observe how they tackled the challenge of accessing the food inside the shells. Frequently, the crows would take the nuts and drop them onto the road, waiting for passing cars to crush them open. Fascinated by these remarkable creatures, Joy happily fed them in her garden every day. As time went by, she accumulated a small group of crows who would regularly visit her garden for food. This continued over the next few years as Joy transitioned from a young girl to a young adult. Every day, like clockwork, the group of crows would show up and squawk until Joy fed them. Among them, one particular crow caught Joy's attention. It appeared like an ordinary bird except for the fact that it was missing one eye. Appreciating irony, Joy affectionately named this crow Blinky. Out of all the crows, Blinky became her favorite, and she often gave it extra portions of food to express her fondness. In return, Blinky would bring Joy shiny objects that it seemed to treasure. The fact that the bird was willing to offer these shiny trinkets left Joy feeling immensely happy and privileged to have earned the crow's friendship. 
As Joy reached adulthood, she decided to enlist in the army. She had always believed it would be an adventurous and fulfilling career path, distinct from that of her parents. Upon hearing the news of their daughter's decision, Arnold and Amelia were conflicted in their emotions. They were pleased with Joy's pursuit of her dreams on her own terms, but they couldn't help but worry about the dangers of her chosen profession in the army. The couple understood that things could go terribly wrong in an instant, but knowing they couldn't dissuade Joy, they gave her their blessings and hoped for her safe return. However, there was one individual Joy couldn't explain her sudden absence to, Blinky. Even after Joy left for boot camp, the crow would still show up daily, demanding its food. The bird had grown accustomed to its routine and couldn't comprehend why Joy wasn't there to greet it with a warm smile and a handful of seeds and nuts. After a week of the persistent crow squawking in the garden for hours on end, Arnold had finally had enough. Arnold and Amelia had spent much of their youth traveling and didn't have a child until their mid-forties. As a result, Arnold was already an older man when Joy joined the army, enjoying a peaceful retirement with no obligations. Determined to do something about the crow, Arnold decided to take up Joy's responsibilities while she was away. Every morning, the old man would wake up early and ensure he had an ample supply of seeds and nuts for all the birds in the garden. Initially, Arnold considered this task to be nothing more than a chore, a way to quiet down the birds. However, as days went by, he began to appreciate the beauty of their presence and the joy they brought to the garden. He found solace in nurturing the feathered visitors and took pleasure in their company. As the days and weeks passed, Arnold increasingly looked forward to observing the birds that visited each day. Blinky, the crow, faithfully appeared to eat the food provided. However, whenever Arnold tried to approach Blinky, the bird would promptly fly away. Arnold noticed that Blinky seemed slightly more hesitant around him compared to his daughter, Joy. Nonetheless, the determined older man wanted to earn the bird's trust. Blinky was the closest thing Joy had to a pet, as she believed in allowing wild animals to thrive in their natural environments. With a great deal of patience, waiting, and tempting Blinky with various foods, Arnold finally succeeded in convincing the crow to eat from his hand. The old man was thrilled with this achievement, and he and Blinky gradually developed a strong friendship. Blinky became as significant to Arnold as he was to Joy. However, a few weeks after their friendship had blossomed, Arnold and Amelia received devastating news. Joy had been injured while on a mission abroad. Overwhelmed with worry and grief, Arnold and Amelia didn't receive many details from the army, only that Joy needed to take leave to recover. As the days passed without Joy's return, Arnold's anxiety grew. Each morning, he would sit outside with the birds, feeding them bread, but his worried and preoccupied demeanor left Blinky particularly perplexed. The bird sensed that something was wrong but couldn't grasp the exact nature of the problem. In an attempt to uplift his newfound friend's spirits, Blinky began bringing Arnold an assortment of shiny objects, much like it had done for Joy. One day, a crow brought Arnold an old ring. When the old man saw it, he couldn't believe his eyes. It was the very ring he had given Joy when she was younger. Engraved inside the ring were the words, forever loved and treasured. Joy had lost the ring at the park while out with friends, and she had been devastated, crying for two days. When Arnold saw the ring brought by the crow, he couldn't help but break down in tears. He felt that the gift was a sign from a higher power, possibly God, indicating that things would be all right and that he would find Joy alive and well. A few days later, Joy returned home, stepping off the plane. Although she looked a little beaten up with some scrapes and bruises, she didn't have any major injuries. Amelia and Arnold hugged their daughter tightly, relieved that she was safe and sound, back in their arms. After their embrace, Arnold showed Joy the ring given by Blinky, the crow. He told her that when he had feared the worst, the crow had reassured him that everything would be okay. Joy was shocked to see the found ring and immediately put it back on her finger. She also understood that it symbolized good fortune and love, and it was Blinky's way of showing that they cared for her and her family. Joy, Arnold, and Amelia made sure to continue feeding all the crows that visited their garden, 
but they reserved a special spot for Blinky. They spoiled Blinky with extra food and treats. Although Joy was saddened by the loss of her friend, she knew that Blinky would always watch over her. It was an incredible story, and I would love to hear your thoughts on it in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more amazing videos. Eagles are majestic birds with peculiar behavior patterns, often preoccupied with hunting, feeding and soaring. Yet the hawk showed up outside the veterinarian's office several times, confusing staff for weeks until they realized what the bird was doing and the reason for its visits left everyone speechless. The Quebec Wildlife Rehabilitation Center is a place to help animals of all kinds from across Canada and North America. The staff at this veterinary clinic regularly treats wild and domestic animals. They are used to seeing creatures on the verge of life and death. So when a bald eagle was found lying in agony in the Nova Scotia forest, clinic staff were well prepared to treat it urgently. The eagle was flown to Quebec, where it was examined and treated. Mordo Mesa, the clinic's resident ornithologist, led the work. Because of her gigantic size, Mordo affectionately named her Eagle Basra, in homage to the Godzilla movies. Now Basra is so weak that she doesn't even have the strength to fly, and she can't even stand up by herself. When she arrived at the clinic, she was slow and docile. Mordo sees this as a warning sign, since healthy eagles are often violent and aggressive. For example, Basra lay still and underwent x-rays, which revealed that she was frail and low on energy. A healthy bird will struggle and need to be restrained to get a clear x-ray. Mordo confirmed that Basra's consciousness was fading, and that staff would need to diagnose the problem and begin treatment as quickly as possible if she was to survive. After more tests, the clinic concluded that Basra had lead poisoning, possibly from years of eating lead. Fragments from his prey. This is the number one concern for Basra's health. Due to lead poisoning, she had several incidental issues such as dehydration, extreme cold, and a high number of parasites. So workers treated Basra for lead poisoning by injecting her with a drug that stabilizes blood chemistry. They also worked to make her feel more comfortable by removing the lice and giving her warmth and water. Basra received the best care and was able to continue the fight for her life. It was especially odd that another vulture started visiting the veterinary clinic after Basra was rescued. Staff were baffled when they spotted a second eagle flying by and waiting in a nearby tree. Is this another animal in need? Workers in Quebec couldn't be sure, but they very much suspected that something strange was going on. As far north as Nova Scotia, Canada, bald eagles are uncommon. The appearance of the second eagle so soon after Basra was too coincidental to happen by chance. Trusting that Basra will be cared for by his wonderful staff, Mordo goes out to investigate the second eagle to assess whether it needs help as well. However, this task proved to be easier said than done. Because the bird is very aggressive and appears angry when Mordo approaches. This is typical behavior for any eagle or large bird of prey. But at the same time it seemed very abnormal. Why do eagles visit the same place over and over again? Just sitting there not hunting or eating. This is indeed a very special case. Mado tried to get closer, but it was not cooperative. It should not suffer from lead poisoning like Basra, as it is healthier and more energetic. But why on earth would healthy animals show up near Quebec? As the days passed and the clinic continued to treat and monitor Basra, she appeared to be slowly regaining her strength. Meanwhile, staff are keeping an eye on their new eagle friend, who has set up camp near the clinic. Basra continued her treatment and received regular injections, a treatment known as chelation. When she recovered, Basra regained her strength and personality. This is the main way Mado sees life pouring back into Basra. After a few days of treatment, Mordo noticed some small improvements in his condition, and he was particularly excited when Basra began to behave well after a few days. Things are looking up and staff are happy to see their life-saving efforts paying off. But no one can relax until she is fully healed. Every day, their second eagle friend also comes to the clinic. They continue to monitor the bird, checking for lead poisoning or injuries, 
but basically looking for a reason for the hawk's strange behavior. Every day, Quebec workers are disappointed by their inability to solve the mystery. What is this eagle doing there? It doesn't get close to people, but it doesn't want to be too far away either. Is it possible that this eagle was trying to hunt in poor Basra's weakened state? This may explain why it keeps showing up outside the clinic. If it's waiting for food, Mordo will turn his attention to the new eagle once Basra's recovered. She tried leaving some food for it to see if it was actually waiting there, but the bird wouldn't eat anything people gave it. Instead, the bird started doing the opposite of taking food from the clinic staff. Eagles would go hunting, leaving food and trophies at the clinic, so Mordo knew the bird would hunt, which was a good natural sign. The hawk also appeared angry most of the time, which is typical, and luckily for everyone, hunger wasn't the reason the hawk was in this small Nova Scotia town. So why is it behaving so strangely? The real reason melts everyone's hearts. The time has finally come to release Basra back into the wild. Mado and his crew are thrilled to see this magnificent bird back in its natural habitat. But they also worry about what will happen when their patient encounters another eagle. However, Basra is ready for the next phase of her recovery, which includes flying and returning to the skies. Mordo, wearing protective gear, took Basra outdoors. He was pleased to see Basra eagerly spread his wings and wriggled away. Her natural instincts were fully restored, so she flew out of Meadow's hands. Soar through the skies above the forests of Quebec, ever upwards. However, Basra's triumph was interrupted as a second eagle flew towards her. Clinic staff watched in horror as the eagle swooped down on Basra. Is she about to get hurt again? She didn't run away from the other hawk, nor did she try to fight it. Instead, he turned around and continued flying quietly. But the bird swooped down on her again, and once again the Quebec team panicked and brainstormed ways to help Basra. Until the insightful Mordor noticed something that shocked them all. Basra didn't run away or hunt down another hawk as they played and danced together in the air. You see, the second eagle is a male. Not only that, but he is Basra's partner. He followed his partner and watched. His health decline. Then after she was rescued, he waited patiently outside the center while she received treatment. This is a love story between two eagles who struggle to survive and stay together. Basra's partner has been waiting for her for days and may not know whether she is alive or dead in the clinic. What an incredible relationship these birds have. Staff continue to admire the sight of the eagles flying around together, all looking healthier in their natural environment. Eventually, the birds flew out of sight and staff knew they had not only saved a large eagle, but her mate as well. However, the surprises did not end there. Stay tuned for the puzzling reasons behind the eagle's behavior. In the quiet segment left by the hawks, a smart staffer pointed to the real reason behind the hawk's odd behavior. They realized Basra's mate had been trying to help feed her. He drops dead prey in an attempt to deliver food to his weakened mate, knowing she cannot hunt on her own. Now this is a love story that has been passed down through the ages. So known that from ancient times until our present day, hunting has always played an important role in human life, especially during the dawn of civilization. It was almost the only way to obtain food. However, nowadays it has become a recreational activity for pleasure and excitement. Unfortunately, acts of cruelty during hunting are often an integral part of this destructive pursuit. But there are cases where human actions are completely devoid of logic and only cause suffering to the animals. One such incident occurred in India, in one of the provinces located in the northwest of the country. As it is known, in this state, the contrast between luxury and poverty is so striking that anything can happen within its borders. Early in the morning, a resident of one of the villages woke up to the sound of stray dogs growling in the makeshift dump. Understanding that the hungry dogs had cornered some animal, the man quickly got dressed and went outside. However, before the man could take ten steps, an astonishing sight unfolded before his eyes. At first, the man thought that what he saw was merely a product of his sick imagination. But when the Indian rubbed his eyes and looked closer, 
he realized that everything was happening right in front of him. The stray dogs had cornered not just anyone, but a full-grown leopard who, despite its impressive size, looked very strange. The astonishment of the Indians was also explained by the fact that the leopard was completely devoid of a head, or rather, it was certainly present, but it had a very peculiar shape and was brightly shining in the rays of the morning sun. The cornered beast growled angrily and fiercely fought off the pack of hungry dogs with its body. The astonished man approached closer and unable to contain his emotions, burst into laughter. The sight of a shiny milk can instead of a head on the leopard was familiar to every Indian since childhood. After having a good laugh, the Indian still showed sympathy and called for help from a local hunter. The hunter, who turned out to be an elderly man, didn't bat an eye at the leopard's comical situation and immediately got down to business. To do so, he tied the predator's paws together and brought it down to the ground. Then the old man asked his companion to bring some lamp oil. When the hunter finally obtained what he wanted, he smeared the edges of the can with oil and carefully pulled it towards himself. In response, the leopard growled discontentedly but after a couple of minutes, it was free. By looking at its face and the tongue sticking out, it was clear that the animal was suffering from hunger and thirst. After cautiously giving the predator some water to drink, the hunter, taking all necessary precautions, released it back into the wild. But the story did not end there. It later turned out that the leopard had fallen into a gruesome and inhumane trap set by one of the locals. Seeing a young leopard in the vicinity, the scoundrel placed a piece of meat inside an empty can and left it in a deserted area. He knew that by tempting the predator with the treat, it would inevitably stick its head into the can. According to his plan, the animal would become weak from hunger and thirst and turn into an easy prey. It's hard to say what guided the poacher to resort to such a barbaric hunting method against the leopard. Perhaps the leopard had caused some harm to his property, or maybe the man simply wanted to exert power over the defenseless predator. Whatever the case may be, it is important to always remember not to inflict cruelty and violence upon animals because the law of karma is always in effect, and anyone can find themselves in a similar situation. What happened and what is the direction of the story? If this is your first time here, and if you want to find new facts that will make you more aware and better informed, make sure to subscribe and activate the notification bell so you don't miss anything. The man attacked the woman, but he didn't know she wasn't alone. The girl went out with her child and dog and walked beside the forest belt, but the gangster was about to attack an unsuspecting mother. However, the dog bravely rescued the mother and daughter from the attack. Kamara and his mother live in a country house next to a small village near the largest forest in Tiger District. Her father died, and she lived with her mother, Angela, and the children, which made life very difficult for them. Kamara had a lot of card games, which her mother left her, but her mother left home by chance and never came back. The mother used to make paper dolls at home and then take them to the village to sell them for money. Although the work did not bring her much money, she always loved and mastered it, which made the children in the village want to buy the toys she made. Kamara has been working to care for the children since her husband died in an accident. Then she lived in her mother's house. She grew vegetables and sold them in the village. She also cleaned the homes of some wealthy residents in the village. The mother wants her children to get the life they want. After entering school, she bought thick winter clothes and school supplies to take her daughter to school. In winter, especially when income sources become scarce, the mother is even more uncomfortable because she doesn't have enough money to meet her needs and those of her children. The mother could not help but shed tears as she looked at her daughters, for she could not buy everything she needed in winter. But they were all very happy, for they spent most of their time playing and entertaining at home, so that they could forget these sufferings. Suddenly, the child came to tell Kamara that someone was coming, so Kamara asked these people why they came to her house, and one of them told her that they had been in prison with her late parents, but then they died in prison due to physical reasons. Kamara was so shocked that she shed tears that she plucked up the courage to ask these people why their parents were in prison and how their parents were related to them. The escaped prisoner told her that they had brought her parents' paper to make dolls. But they were refused to pay for the paper every time, 
and they were assured that they would return it next time. However, her parents failed to keep their promise, so they still owe them a lot of money. They came this time because they had just escaped from prison and could not find anything to eat for the time being. The mother found herself in an awkward position because she had no money to give these men, so she wanted them to come back another day. But these men refused to leave and insisted on taking the money. The woman kept looking at them and asked them to leave her house because she had no money. After that, the three men asked her to bring them food before they would leave. Then, they sat by the fire and waited for food. Angela brought all the food in the kitchen and gave it to these people, hoping that they would leave and calm her and her three children. But when they finished eating, they threatened her that if she didn't give them money, they would kidnap the child. Hearing this, the mother trembled all the time, because she couldn't imagine that these men were going to kidnap her most precious children, and then she began to plan a life-saving plan. The mother told the thieves that she would send her daughter to the neighbors to bring them money, and she accompanied her to the door, and then she told her daughter to run quickly to the forest and not to go home, because these people were going to hurt her. When her daughter left the house, her mother began to scream and asked her to run quickly. Then the escaped gangsters found that the girl was running away. They immediately stood up, beat the mother standing at the door, knocked her down, and began to chase the girl, trying to arrest the girl and take her hostage. The girl continued to run through the wood, while the men followed her, while the mother put on her coat and closed the door, and ran behind them in search of her daughter. It was less than 20 degrees below zero, and the mother was very worried about her daughter, because it was getting dark and her daughter had never been to the forest alone, so she must be very scared. Kamara heard the voices of the men following her, and she grew even more frightened when she realized they were approaching her. They followed her footsteps in the snow, so that she wouldn't slip into the woods. Fortunately for the girl, she came to a place in the forest where trees and jungles interweave, and then she used her emaciated body to get into the jungle. Confused, the gangsters looked around for her. Night fell, and the sound of the wild beasts in the forest began to ring, and the girl felt very frightened, but she went on walking. Suddenly, a small village appeared not far from the forest. Keisha was very happy. She had to run quickly before the gangsters found her. As the girl scurried among the trees, she found her faithful puppy nursing its two cubs. The girl was afraid that as soon as she stood up, the dog would protect her, and then the girl stood firmly in place and did not move. The danger she is encountering comes from the fierce animals in the forest and the thieves behind her. I met this child in this situation, time passed slowly, and it was very cold outside. She squatted on the ground, and the dog approached her and kept smelling, while the girl trembled with fear. When the puppy approached her and began to play with her, she calmed down a little. The big dog showed great kindness and calmness, and watched its cubs play with Kamara. At the same time, the girl heard footsteps approaching here. She realized that they were the three gangsters chasing her. Then she held the puppy, closed her eyes and continued to wait. When the gangster approached Kamara and tried to snatch her from among the puppies, the big dog jumped out and broke its fangs. The men didn't give up. They insisted on arresting the girl because they wanted to take her hostage for money. When one of them attacked and grabbed the girl's hand and pulled it out, she attacked and kept beating them. She hit her friends, so the gangsters kept surrounding her children and women. When these men tried to attack again, the dog confronted them fiercely, repulsed them so hard that they were wounded and immediately expelled them, and it chased them through the forest until they retreated completely, and then returned to its cubs. Just then the mother came here, and greeted the forest guard, spotted it on her way to her daughter, and was astonished at how she lay between the two puppies. When the girl saw her mother, she ran to her and hugged her. The dog came back with her cubs and continued to nurse them. Angela took her daughter's hand and went home under the guidance of forest guards. Angela took her daughter's hand and returned home with the forest guard. The forest guard promised them that he would report the case to the city police so as to arrest the thieves as soon as possible. On the way back, Kamara noticed the dog and its cub following her, as if confirming the woman and her family. Then they got home and the dog returned. 
From that day on, the dog and his cubs came to her house every day, and she would receive the puppies in the yard, play with them and give them food. A few days later, my mother learned that three gangsters had been arrested and sent back to prison. Of course, if Kamara was punched with a bottle again, she would definitely die, but her loyal dog saved her at the right time. The most loyal dogs are extremely loyal to the human family, and although they are often happy to make new friends, they are well aware of their duties. Thank you for watching. Please like it and share the video on social networks. We will reply to you as soon as possible.